wanted to talk a little bit about this uh, final experiment and it just seems to me like there's a lot of division within the community and yeah it just it's, it seems like with everything surrounding the players and everything around surrounding the the entire premise of it it just seems very sketchy now i'm not unique in this view obviously a lot of people have spoken at nauseam about it um, sovereign soul nachiketa uh, to name a few um, and of course ryan over at uh, burning the corporate fiction so i'm not gonna you know delve into you know the I guess the surrounding the peripheral kind of stuff with the players involved specifically the um the benefactor what i want to talk about is i believe in something called the law of unintended consequences and what i mean by that is i think that if i had to bet right i do think that there will be a 24-hour sun observed and i don't mean daylight I mean, the actual sun being seen at that location. And the reason I say that is because, number one, there is a model which does seem to depict that. There's a model which does seem to show that there is indeed a 24-hour sun at the South Pole, not just at the North Pole. But also... You have to consider a lot of things. I mean, the globe model as it is requires a 24-hour sun both at the North Pole and at the South Pole. And as much as the popular map, the azimuthal equidistant map, would require of necessity that there isn't a 24-hour sun, I've never really bought into that map as the be-all and end-all. You know, there's the other issues, you know, distances and, you know, the morphology of the maps and the size of Australia and all those other things. But it's never really made sense to me. It's made sense in the sense that, yes, the Earth is flat, but the other parts of it just never really quite matched. Now, unbeknownst to me, there's been a model that actually depicts a 24-hour sun over in Antarctica for years i just never knew about it you know and and for one reason or another the specific um i guess the specific channel that um really um has presented it for for a number of years just never knew about it and this is i guess again the the, the law of unintended consequences and this is where it plays in because you know with this whole thing having bubbled up over the last couple of months or so now i'm aware that there is actually a model that does require the earth to be not even required it depicts the earth as it is level stationary topographical plane but it also shows that there is actually the possibility of there being a 24-hour sun in Antarctica. now it's funny to me because I've heard quite a few people of late. Uh, I was listening to a, uh, I was listening to the interview with as a Teddy Warrior over on Nachiketa's channel. Um, great interview, by the way. If you haven't, uh, if you haven't listened to it, I'd recommend it highly. And he kind of thinks similar to what I think, which is there probably, most likely, is going to be a 24 hours unobserved, and the people that have kind of engineered this globe mentality their model requires a 24-hour sun in antarctica so for there not to be and for years and years the idea that there is a 24-hour sun of necessity really to fit the globe model and then for people to go there and not observe one to me that's just asinine it's it's a schoolboy error on their part which is why i think that there will be a 24-hour sun observed and i also like to think you know 
why is for example jaron so gung-ho about the idea that if you do see a 24-hour sun then effectively that debunks the flat earth how can you know to use the late great bob's uh mantra the preponderance of evidence suggests that the earth is a level stationary topographical planet now you introduce the 24-hour sun to antarctica and all of a sudden everything is blown out and dismissed effectively and i know that's not exactly what he's saying but it might as well be because again there is a model that depicts the 24-hour sun in antarctica at that time when they will be there should he go there so to dismiss that out of hand and not really look at it and think you know there's something to this and it does fit in with everything else every all the other evidences of the earth being again level stationary topographical plane it's just it's bizarre to me it really is so I don't know, I just think he's just too quick to dismiss that. And I'm not entirely sure why. And that's kind of been the reason why a lot of people are calling him a shill. And I'm not necessarily in that camp. I don't think Jaron is a shill. I do, however, question why he would outright dismiss the model that does almost perfectly depict the 24 hour sun in Antarctica to me that just seems it just seems like anathema to what we do it just seems antithetical to what we do I mean what we do is we, we look at observations we've long since established that the earth is is a level topographical plane so now we have to understand okay why is there a 24 hour sun if there is indeed one which I personally think that they will observe one so now we have to establish why is there a 24 hour sun? How could it be? And the other thing we have to think about as well is we don't actually know what the sun is. We have absolutely no idea what the sun is, how big it is, how far away it is. We have no idea, right? So to, to say that it cannot be on a flat earth, not that long ago, we were saying that the earth can't be flat. So let's not forget that. Let's not forget where we came from. You know, we, you know, a lot of us that heard the flat earth for the first time, our first reaction was, <laughs> especially for those of us who were taught that, you know, in antiquity, people used to think that the earth is flat. And then you hear, you know, the usual, if it's, if it's a flat earth, well, where's the edge? So now that we're here, and now that we know what we know, why would we outright dismiss that the earth is level, is stationary, is a topographical plane, but that there also is a 24 hour sun in the south, just as there is in the north? Why would we dismiss that? And that's my question to you. Think about that for a second. And, and you know, to me, it's, it's a case of what they observe in Antarctica, when they go, should they go, will only reaffirm that this place that we live, this place that we call home, we really do not understand it. And you know, it might be a case that we never will understand it. We may never get quote unquote empirical evidence to prove that the sun is um, a physical ball of light we absolutely don't know and might never ever actually know so with that in mind then I implore you anyone who calls himself a flat earther think about why the sun might actually appear for 24 hours in Antarctica and think of why that could be and think of the model that depicts it you can't just dismiss the model outright. You can't just say, no, it's a, uh, a digital representation of what the globe is and then just leave it at that. For all we know, we will never know why there is a sun, a 24 hour sun 
in Antarctica. But again, if I was a betting man, I would think that there probably will be a 24-hour storm in Antarctica.